God bless you. God bless you, <clears throat> each and every one of you. Hey, you know what time it is. We're here one more time, and again, it's our Tuesday night Bible class. <clears throat> uh, well, I don't like to call it um, Bible class. Uh, what I like to call it, um, um, uh, Biblical Encounter, or just midweek worship. Uh, amen. Um, I want us to know that God is getting ready to do some great and wonderful things. Good afternoon, Gretchen. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, Gretchen, it's okay. Uh, I want to empower each and every one of you. I'm on two pages. If you can uh, help me, do me a favor if you can. I want those of you, if you can, to do me a favor. And this favor that I want you to do, I want you to like and share. And then I want you to, if you can, create yourself a um, uh, um, a watch party. Uh, there is something that God wants to do in us. And I want you to uh, see what it is that the Lord is getting ready to do on tonight. I'm excited. How many of you saw the live on today? How many of you saw the live that we did on today? And the live that we did on today were uh, amazing. We we talked about, let's talk about it. Let's let's talk about it. And you'll hear this more often from me. You'll hear it. Uh, this is going to be one of my major slogans. Let's talk about it. Amen. And we're going to be talking about a lot of things that's in the body of Christ. A lot of things that's in our world, in our society. Many of you know that I'm a realistic individual. I love to talk about realistic things, reality. I want to talk about things that's real because we serve a real God and we're human beings with, with real issues. And um, and even though we have issues, that doesn't mean I can do what I want, when I want, and however way I want to do it. That is not what the Father is requiring. All the Father is asking of us. Amen. So I'm, I'm excited about what God is getting ready to do. And everything that he's getting ready to do, he's an amazing God. He's a phenomenal God. Amen. And because he's God, and I know that he is, um, I'm excited about what God is getting ready to do. I'm excited about the mere fact that God is getting ready to do the exceedingly and the abundantly. He's getting ready to do what I can never phantom for him to do. I said it on today, Pastor Cynthia Boone. We I said it on today. Uh, it's it's requirement. It's a response and then it's a respect. But on today, I want you, those of you can and will, go with me to uh, the book of Joel. Go with me to the book of Joel. If you can and you will, well, walk with me and go with me to the book of Joel. Joel, amen, the, um, right around the second chapter and the 17th verse. Um, the second chapter and the 17th verse. Um, and if we if we want to, I can read with you the first verse, Joel uh, number two, chapter two and verse one. It says, sound the alarm in Jerusalem. Raise the battle cry on my holy mountain. Let everyone tremble and fear because the day of the Lord is is upon us. Now, this is not a moment. I want you to say, oh, be frantic. Don't, I don't want you to be frantic um, because those of us that save and we love God, when the day of the Lord is upon us, we, we're not going to be frantic. We're not going to be uh, discombobulated because this is what we live for. We're living for the day. We're living for the time that the Lord would be able uh, to come and rescue us. Rescue us from where? From the heartache, the pain, and the issues of this 
this life. Amen. Uh, but I want us to go down uh, to the uh, 17th verse. But if if I will, you let me read the 12th verse and I'm going to make a lot of sense with what I'm saying. All right. Joel, the second chapter, number one, he told me to do something. Remember what I said today. There is a requirement. There is a response. And then there is a respect. Okay. Uh, Joel, number one, I mean, Joel two and one says, sound the alarm. We have a requirement to do. We have something to do in the body of Christ. We must sound the alarm of God. What the alarm? We have to sound the alarm seven days a week, 365 days out of the year. We must sound the alarm to let the enemy know that uh, the, the, the day of the Lord is upon us. We can see very clearly that the Lord is upon us because we look at the times of the sign uh, where fathers are against their own sons, where daughters are against their mothers and, and, and siblings rivalry is unto the uprise. We're living in a day and time of troublesome where we don't know what is what anymore. We can't compare. We, we don't know if who is the father and who is the son, who is the mother, who's the daughter. We, 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 we don't know, but I, I want to empower you and encourage you saints of God on today that the hand of the Lord is up on us and the hand of God is about to do the phenomenal. Are you here with me? The Bible says, sound the alarm. You have a requirement now. Sound the alarm. Raise up the battle cry on my holy mountain. Where are you going to raise it up? On my holy mountain and let everyone tremble in fear. In other words, because the day of the Lord is upon us. Why would God ask us to tremble in fear at the prophet Joel? It's because, you know, we got to make sure, even the righteous got to make sure that you are in fine tuning with God in sync with God because some of us live such a double lifestyle. We do what we want. We say what we want. We act the way we want. But God is requiring for those of us to get into a place, amen, where God can cause us to walk circumspectingly according to what? The word of God. Come on, tell your neighbor, I got to walk according to God's word, not according to, to psychological, not according to what nobody want me to walk according to, but according to the word of God. All right. So, so we read number one, number 12 says, this is why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time. Give me your heart. Come with fasting, weeping and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is merciful and compassionate slow to anger and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. Who knows, perhaps he will give you a reprieve, sending you a blessing instead of this curse. Perhaps you will be able to offer grain and wine. Now watch this, we get ready to go there. To the, to the Lord God as before. Number 15. Blow the ram's horn in Jerusalem. Announce a time of fasting. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. Gather all the people to the elders, the children, and even the babes. Now, there's a requirement here. We talked about it at 12 noon, that there is a kingdom requirement. If we're going to operate in the kingdom, we got to make sure that we have kingdom requirement so that we can have a kingdom response and so that we can have a kingdom result. Amen. Uh, respect so that when you get respected, people uh, are, are result. Let's deal with the result matter, right? He says, blow the ram's horn in Jerusalem. Announce the time of fasting. Watch this. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. Watch this. Call all the people. This is not a time that we just call the elders. This is not the time we just calling the elders to come to the front line. This isn't the time where we call um, uh, the deacons and the missionaries and, and, the, and, and the state supervisor. No, no ma'am, no sir. This is the time, everybody, the youth department, the young adults, uh, um, this is the time for the elderly. This is the time for the pastors, the bishop. The Bible said that even when it was time for the kings to go to battle, David stayed. Come on. We don't want to have to have a David moment in this 
Holy Week. We don't want to have a David moment in the midst of where we are. God says in Joel, he said, gather all the people in the 16th verse, Joel 2 and 16. He said, gather everybody and bring everybody to the front line. Get everybody together. He said, now watch this. He said, the elders, the children, and even the babes. Called the bridegroom from his quarter and the bride from her private room. Let, now number 17 says, let the priest who minister in the Lord's presence stand between the porch or between the entry room and the temple and the altar and let them pray. The requirements, instructions, there's some things you got to do. Spare your people, Lord. Don't let your special, don't let your special possession become an object of mockery. Don't let them become a joke for unbelievers, foreigners who say, has the God of Israel left them? Watch this. The Lord replied, look, I am sending you grain and new wine and olive oil, enough to satisfy your needs. You will no longer be an object of mockery among the southern surrounding nation. I will drive away these armies from the north and I will send them into a parched land. Those in the front will be driven unto the Dead Sea and the rear into the Mediterranean Sea. Then uh, the stretch of their rotting bodies will rise over the land. Surely the Lord has done great things. I, I want to talk tonight for a few minutes because we were sharing on today about the requirement. We were sharing on today about uh, the response. We were sharing on today about uh, the, the respect. Listen, uh, Joel 2 and 17 said, let the ministers and the priests, if we would do some commentary reading, we will find out that the priest being in particular sense of the Lord's servants, a particular person as the Lord's servant, and are required to take the lead in the sacred, the sacred work of um, of the ministry and to stand weeping and praying between the porch and the altar that is in the open court just before the porch of the temple built by Solomon that we see in first king um the sixth at sixth chapter and the third verse now I want to mix up a, a, a drive a point real good to us that in the process of being a priest or a leader, you have an obligation, you have a job, you have uh, an assignment by God that you must maintain and do. You cannot, and, and, and watch this, if we find ourselves operating and functioning in the things that God is requiring for us to function, we'll be less uh, in the blocks, we'll be less in a lot of scandals, uh, in, in, in the socialization world or social world uh, because the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the teaching of Joel, the second chapter and the 17th verse, that the priest being a particular person of the Lord, a servant of God, and has a required to lead sacred worship or the sacred work of, of God and to stand weeping. He have a job to do, to weep between the porch and the altar. Now, I was born Catholicism, meaning Catholic. I was Catholic. And the, the job of the priests and the nuns and those of high officials of the Catholic Church was to work, it was to stay at the church and to work. Meaning, a lot of time you lose your ability to have a life. And I, I, I do understand that a lot of people think that once you come in the role of being a man or a woman of God, that it's supposed to become a, um, a personality thing or it's supposed to become glit and glamour. To walk in the things of God, remind, let me say something to you guys. To walk in the things of God, there is no glit and no glamour. No, it's, it's not a glamorous thing to be a man of God. It's not glamorous glamorous to be a woman of God because you got to get your hands dirty. You got to work with people. You got to work with the sheep. Sometimes you have to smell like the sheep. Remember when David was out in the field tending to his father's sheep and tending to the things of 
his father, he worked and he labored and he had the smell of a sheep. Why? Because he had to fight bears. He had to fight lions. He had to probably fight a lot of different um, multiplicity of type of animals, of diversity type of animals to deal with, to keep his father's sheep together. When you're operating in ministry, you have a job to do. And that job does not allow you to have a worldly if I can say this, a worldly and social life. I believe a lot of our fights that we're having in the church is because the church is trying to be so worldly. We are trying to be so much like the world, feel like I'm missing something. No, because if any man be in Christ, the word of the Lord said, he then become a what? A new creature. The Bible said all things are passed away and all things become new. Now, I know you're not going to get with me with that. I know you're going to feel a certain kind of way. And I, I, I know you're going to be saying, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, brother. You, 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 you done lost your mind. Now, wait a minute. You, you, you're messing up right here. You mean to tell me if I become a leader in the body of Christ, I got to give up this world? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. That's what I just said. I mean, and I'm going to say it again. If you're going to be a man or a woman of God, there are some things you're going to have to leave right where they are. You can't act like your mother. You can't act like your father. You can't act like the world. You can't do certain things because the job of a priest is very important. The job of a priest is to begin to make sacrifice, to not only make sacrifice, but to warn the people to do things that, that's God. And, and, and watch this. It's a constant thing. It's something you have to do all the time. And sometimes we're so caught up in our own, um, our own a vision and plan for our lives that we mishandle and drop the ball so many times. Amen. We drop the ball so many times um, uh, doing the work of God. So here we find that there was a special porch in first king that was built by Solomon. And when it was built by Solomon, it, the priest had a job to go out to the people and gather the people and begin to cry out, especially when it was in the midst of battles and pandemics and, and wars and, and plagues. You had a job to do. You, your job is to make sure that the sacrifice or or the sacrifice that you made is acceptable unto God. Now, how can we do that and walk in a circumspective lifestyle if we're so bombarded by issues and drama? It's because we have walked out of the realm of what God wanted us to do. A lot of the prayers have not been heard. A lot of the uh, the prayers have not been heard by the priest. It's because um, uh, some of us have gotten so isolated and insulated. We've got isolated so in a way that we've isolated ourselves from church and we've gotten so contaminated by the world because doc, well, how many you brought in today, doc? How many, how many souls you want today, doc? Or how much your money? I remember 30 something years ago when I first started uh, preaching, I've been preaching for 34 years now. And for 34 years, my first beginning of the year, I used to be, I, I thought that was the way of God. Uh, when I would go and preach and go and minister the word of the Lord, I would get around preachers and, and they had $1,500 gator shoes on and it was going nowhere. Uh, they had some, uh, some hickey five hickey uh um hickey-bikey suits on him and all these fancy tailor-made suits on three and four five thousand dollars they had a fifteen hundred dollar briefcase they had five armor bearers come on here uh and whatnot and every time we were gathered say what's up doc how many people you saw today doc how many this today doc doc this and doc that and i used to sit back and like uh i remember one time one of the preachers said to me man our mission offering was um um five thousand dollars our tithes were, were $90,000. Our offering was $107,000. And I watched this man tell me all these different tithing, that uh, financial input that he's taken. And I watch him be in the midst of the ghetto of New Orleans. You're in the project part of New Orleans. And you mean to tell me the mission offering is $5,000 and no one went and bought a medicine for the senior citizens. No one went to uh, put a table out with free food to give away free food. If you have $5,000 in a mission offering and you're not sending it overseas, 
You're not sending it nowhere. It's just sitting in a bank account. Yeah, Doc, I closed out last year. My mission offer last year was $89,000. Why do you have $89,000 in a mission offering sitting in your church? And there is homeless people. Somebody need their light bills to get paid. Maybe the young woman is stripping because we as the church or you as the leader is not doing your job. I'll wait. I'll wait. Or maybe it's the mere fact that uh, you're doing, you're gathering the finances so that you can have a, 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 a conversation piece to have with your homies and your friends. No, no ma'am, no sir. If you're going to be a leader, your job is, especially the priest, our job is not to just feed the hungry and shelter uh, the homeless and tend to the widows and tend to the foster uh, children and, 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 and the single mothers and, and the dying and the sick and the shed in. But our job is also to make sure that the gates of prayer, the altar of prayer is open continuously. You cannot be a woman of God, a man of God, when I'm talking, I'm not just talking to the pastors. I'm talking to the elders. I'm talking to the ministers of the Lord. I'm talking to the deacons, the missionaries, the ushers, the choir members, the musicians. You cannot be functioning in the body of Christ and don't have the oil of God upon your life. Mm -mm. God told Joel, he said, listen, Joel, he said, I need you to gather all the people. Don't just gather the leaders. This is a gathering of all the people. That's why I said something uh, just recently. I just recently said something. And what I said was uh, simply this, that this ain't the time of the prophets. Come on. Are you hearing me? This ain't this ain't just time for the prophets, but this is a thing concerning. This is something for personal sake. God's calling us personally to come together. God's calling us to come and have a personal relationship. This is not a prophetic moment where the prophets would get up and speak a word and declare a word and say, this is what the Lord said. No, what God wants us to come together and begin to cry out together. God wants us to do it together. The scripture said, where two or three touch and agree, I'll be a God in the midst. Watch this. Let me say something to you, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters. This, um, this shut in is going to be just as long as God need it to be until we become individualized and personalized and realize that we God's using this to get us where we rightly belong. I said something earlier, glory to God, that even in all of this shut in, why the stripping clubs ain't open? See, this ain't just for the church. This thing ain't, 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 ain't no one thing. This is a bilingual thing, a bicoastal thing. This is a, a biracial thing. This is a bicultural thing. Are you hearing me? Uh, uh, this thing ain't just, this thing ain't just for the church to punish the church. No, this thing is also punishing the world. It's punishing the corporate world. It's, it's punishing the politics. All that scandal and, and scheme that they're doing. Glory to God. All of this. See, this ain't just in the United States. This is almost everything. Everywhere. This is in continents to continents, ocean to ocean, Caribbeans to Caribbeans. Come on here. Um, different nations to nation. This is not just affecting China or Japan or, or the Asian uh, territorial. This is also and not the, this is affecting the world, the entire world. Why? Because God is saying it's time for leaders to come back together. We didn't hear it when 9-11 came. We didn't hear it. We didn't pay attention when Oklahoma bombing came. In the late 80s, early 90s, when the Oklahoma bombings came in the 80s, I believe it was. We wasn't listening. We wasn't paying attention. When it went into the that federal building and blowed up the federal building in Oklahoma, we weren't paying attention to all the mudslides and the earthquakes in California that that tore down uh, the freeway, smashed the freeway on top of each other. We wasn't paying attention. We wasn't paying attention to to Katrina and to Rita. All these hurricanes after each other coming in back to back. Called okay, you're not listening. We're not listening. So now here it is because see when Katrina, Oklahoma bombing, the 9/11, all of that. These things happen just in a territory. Now this virus, this issue, whatever is going on is not just happening in the territory, it's happening everywhere. 
Everybody is being affected. Wall Streets are being affected. The banking, the banking systems are being affected. Um, the grocery stores are being affected. Um, everybody, your personal homes, your communities are feeling the effect of this. Bible says now in Joel, he said, go and gather my people. Bring them all. Bring the elder. Bring the children. Bring the husband and the wives. Bring those that are about to be married. Come on. He said, listen, listen. He said, go get the children as well. That's why our kids are out of school. Well, you know what? The children shouldn't be fasting. The children should be praying because they're kids. They don't understand. No, no. When God is trying to bring a sparring to a nation, guess what? Even the children and those that's on the breast got to come subject to God. Listen, because if you don't do it, things happen. Are y'all hearing me? And so here we find out that in Joel, the commentary of the book of Joel is talking about the altar that's built by Solomon. And he said, I need you to get on this porch and I need you to stand between the altar, between the porch and the altar, the place where the sacrifice is and the porch where the gathering of the people come. So we find that here that as, as the men of God, we are there to get to the, um, to get to the altar, to get to the place where they, the altar of burnt offering. This was called the priest court and was the place where the greatest part of those who coursed it was gave their attendance upon this is mentioned as the most proper place or important place for the priest to stand in while they address their prayers and intercession to God in the behalf of the people but also speak to the people concerning what God is saying that's the reason why we have the altar or the pulpit today. There is a place where you stand on. That's a place where you make sacrifices and you go to God and we cry out to God and we seek God. We seek God for his guidance. We seek God for his understanding. And then we declare from that altar, from that porch of the, of that, the, the, the pillar or the porch of God's heart. And we declare and we say, this is what the Lord is saying. This is what the Lord wants to do. But we got to do it together. There's a requirement. I said it today early. That there is a requirement at 12 noon. There is a requirement. There is a response. And then there is a respect. Well, the moment we meet the requirement of God, then God will respond. The, uh, if John 15 and 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, what? You can ask me what you will. And what? It will be done unto you. Listen, I, I was sitting down today and I shared with a man of God and his lovely wife, with Apostle Crossland and, and, and Pastor Benita Crossland. I said to them, we were sitting out talking at their home. I said, listen, this is going to be just as long as it need to be until we, the church, we, the world, come to the understanding that God is fed up. God is sick and tired of all the foolishness. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this again. This, ain't just a, this, this thing ain't just for the church. This thing is for the world. The politics, all the craziness that's going on, uh, spiritual wickedness and rulers of darkness of high places. God said, I'm dealing with it all. I'm dealing with all these matters. I'm going to deal with it because it's been dealing with my people. On behalf of my people, behalf of my people, he said, I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to deal with all the shenanigans. I'm going to deal with all the niggaments. I'm going to deal with all the frustration that the world have put on my people. Because the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, and all they that dwell therein, the the, the, the uh, criminal incriminating act that we're doing on one another. We're, we're sitting there and we're, we're giving information on preachers so that the bloggers can go and blog on them. We're now going live on the bloggers. We're putting our voices and our faces on, on social media. And we're saying that I'm a witness that, of the, um, the proclivity and the promiscuous of leadership. You have done that. You have touched God's anointing. You have touched God's leadership least one you have spoken things and some of this stuff is so old and you're still bringing up old stuff so that you can discriminate the men and the women of God that have already repented and said God I'm sorry and now this stuff is unblocked and we got bloggers making mega money off of the proclivity the fall and the failure of the priests 
We got blogs. The bloggers are making money, thousands, hundreds and thousands of dollars. Uh, and they're getting free trips. They're getting um, advertisement. They're getting push. They're getting things going viral. Why? Because they're using the failure and they're using the uh, proclivity and the mishap of leadership, whether that's be secular leadership or whether that be spiritual leadership. And God said, I'm bringing all this thing to a, to a, to a halt. I'm ending all of this but i need the men the priests the women of god the men and the women to come together in a kingdom alignment and get and and give um the kingdom requirements so that he can respond john 15 and 7 said if i abide in you you abide in me i can you can ask me what you will and it shall be done unto you why and then the 18th verse uh um the eighth verse said that the lord want to find pleasure in us and 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 good help and good understanding. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. So God's trying to bring us together. Tell your neighbor, God's trying to bring us together in the midst of all of this. God is gathering us. He's gathering us as families. He's gathering us as enemies. Pay attention to this. Ladies and gentlemen, pay a good attention to this. Very clear attention. How is it that there are people that we're angry and mad with, and now we're in sealed homes with them? We can't do nothing. God said, no, you can. Right there, it's time to repent. Clean up what you messed up. Clean it up. Get that mess together. You don't like something that he said, and he don't like something you said, and she don't like something you said, and guess what? Because you said it out, 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 out of a good place, but your tone and your pro projection was wrong. When the Bible said, told us, he said, think before a, a, a wise man would consider his ways. Consider, come on, your conversation should be with season. Are you hearing me? So God is simply trying to bring us to that place of clear understanding. There is an assignment. Every priest got an assignment. You have an assignment to stand. You have an assignment to stand on the altar to, and the porch. Stand between that porch and that altar and bring the sacrifice and then bring the declaration to God. A lot of people are not going to be able to handle this season. And this is going to be very frustrating for a lot of people. Very frustrating. But Pastor Murray said something this morning. But the saints don't suppose. I want to encourage you. Saints, you don't supposed to become frustrated. You don't supposed to become annoyed at what's going on. No, no. Why? It's because you are in the mind of God. That's why That's why uh, Joel 2 and 1 said, I'm going to read it again. 2 and 1 said, he said, sound the alarm in Jerusalem. Raise up the battle cry on my holy mountain and let everyone tremble in fear because the day of the Lord is upon us. The day of the Lord is here. It's here. It's right here, right now. It's here. That's why God wants you to clean up your heart. That's why God needed some of you mothers to call your children and repent. God needs some of you fathers to call your sons and daughters and repent. God needs some of you, 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 you went through divorces and stuff and you left that woman broken, destroyed, distorted, and she's trying to move on, but she can't move on because she have your children and she's trying to survive with your kids that you made with her and you moved on with someone else and remarried them and you live in a glamorous life and she's struggling. Uh-uh, no ma'am, no son. Oh, you see the cause and effect right now, man. My brother, you see the cause and the effect upon you right now because see that glamorous life you was living over there? Now even that have come to the hall. Not only did the the woman that have your children that's struggling with having your children have come to heart but you and your glamorous and your new wife with your new issues have come to an end watch this all right now for that woman that man that left you that man have left you and left you dealing with this matter i want to empower you today you got to forgive god is causing this shutdown god is causing this shutdown to happen so that bitter woman can repent that bitter man can repent you're angry with that woman you're frustrated with that woman you're mad with that woman glory to god you, you you're mad with her uh, uh you left her you're angry you're bitter you try to you're using your good life to taunt her oh wait a minute come on pastor it's time now for you to get in that place where you can stand and you glory to god and you can help that sister or that brother get to a place of renewal Amen. Uh, that that you, 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 they, they left your church and it seemed as if you're going on with your life. It's no matter. It's no function. It's nothing wrong. You're moving on. Glory to God. And, and these people are still mad and angry with you. This is the time that God's gathering us. Why we're crying out and why we're fasting and why we're seeking him. He's getting us to that place where we can have clear understanding. 
clear understanding of what's going on. So that's why the Bible says in Joel, in the book of Joel, God said, he said, Joel, gather the people, get everybody. Don't get some people, get everybody, get them all together because there's something that got to take place. There's something has to take place. God is requiring for some things to take place. Uh, you know, um, um, uh, we have bragged a lot of a lot of the pastors, a lot of pastors. I'm, I'm going to say this, and some of you may not like me after I said, but it's your business. I, I, I don't care. I don't care if, if, if you don't like me after I said, but I, I, I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, glory to God. Some of you pastors, some of you pastors have um, glory to God. You, 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 you're better than some other pastors. You feel greater than some other pastors. But, but, but let me ask the question to you, pastors, pastors. Let me ask you a question. Let me, let, let, let me, let, 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 let me, uh, let me ask you a question, pastors. Now that all of this is going on and all the money that you stored in stock and, and invested and all the investment is crumbling and all this is going on. How do you feel now? Are, are you bigger than the small storefront churches? Do you still feel like you're better than the next to storefront churches? Uh, come on. I, 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 I want you to have, I want you to hear me, hear me real clear because when you had your moments and you had your platforms and you had your open doors and you had your three and 500 folks in the, in a service and, and you had all of this money, raising all of this money and you're doing all of that. And then that young church was started and you didn't sow into that young church. You didn't try to help that young church to grow. And, and you bring it in a hundred thousand dollars a week, or you bring in a hundred thousand dollars a month. Glory. To God and that young minister, that young pastor that got the urge and the fire of God, he or she's trying to get to that next place. And you have been, you went through the same thing. You've been there that same moment before. And here it is that you have the opportunity to say, listen, let me get you this building for one year. Let me furnish your building. Let me do all of this. You don't have to be under my ministry. I don't have to be your covering, but just let me do this for you right now. And, and no, did you do that? No. And now the time has come that everybody is suffering. Everybody is going through. Everybody is going to have the cause and effect. Whether you tall, short, big, fat, skinny, thin, ugly, pretty, tatted, untatted, uh, smoker, non-smoker, drinker, non-drinker, uh, popularity preacher or no popularity preacher. Everybody is going to feel the cause and the effect. Why? It's because God said, I am fed up with all the stuff that the world has been doing. The Bible says in Nehemiah, right around the fifth chapter, Nehemiah stood up and started building the wall, restructuring the wall. He was doing some evaluation and he said, wait a minute, these are your people. You're going to oppress your people like this. You're going to raise up interest for your people. You have the ability to restore the walls, but you fail to restore the walls. It's because you want to get up and do certain things. I remember when I was in Los Angeles, California. When I was in Los Angeles, California, we used to get tithing. And Sister Phyllis would tell me how much the tithing were. I would take 10% of our tithing weekly. And I would go and sow it into churches. I didn't know the church. I didn't know the people. I didn't know anything about these people. I didn't even know if the church was still open. And till this day, I may not know if the church is still open. I will put money in napkins and I will put it in an envelope and I write my tithes and my offering. I remember one time going to a church building. I didn't even know if the pastor, if the church was open or not. I remember going in Los Angeles on Broadway, in Los Angeles, Broadway and I believe 89th or Broadway and, and, and 98th. I went to, on, on to the church, was driving one day and I just stopped. I told my, um, my driver, I said, stop. He said, what, well, Pastor Richard? I said, give me some napkin. He said, I don't have that. I said, well, go in that convenience store and give me some napkin. He came back. I said, well, you, you got an envelope in here? He said, well, I got the envelope where I can return something back because I had to sign something. I said, well, give me that envelope. I covered up the money and I wrote on it tithes and offering. And I said, God bless you. It's my seed. And at that moment, the tithes was $300. The offering was $200. I gave away $500. I had a handful of people, but the people was tithers and there was offering givers in Los Angeles. 
And I took that money and I sold that money. Girl, I didn't know those people. I didn't know nothing. I wasn't no prophet, no apostle. I wasn't no bishop like I am now. I just did it because I myself was in a place that I needed help. And I knew that if I needed him, that the money that was in my hand should be a seed and not bread. The Bible said he gave a seed to sow and bread to eat. How can you be a mega ministry? How can you be a successful ministry? And not, if you are doing this, I'm not talking to you. So don't get ashamed in their attitude. But if you are the person I'm talking to, open up your heart and sell your soul back to Jesus. That's all you got to do. And glory to God. And you know that there are ministries that's out there. And listen, don't sow into them because that's your son and your daughter. No, don't, don't do it for that cause. Don't give it grudgingly or out of necessity. But be a cheerful giver, says the Lord. So watch this. Give. Find somebody. Find a ministry. Find a, a place, a leader that will struggle. Find somebody. And say, well, listen, let, I'm going to sow this into you. I'm coming today. I don't know anything about you. I don't want to know anything about you. But I want to cast my bread upon this water. I want to leave this money is $5,000 for you. Or I want to leave this $10,000. Matter of fact, don't say what you're leaving. Just put it in the envelope and say, this is for you, woman of God, man of God. This is for you. I don't care what you do with the Lord. Told me to release it and I'm releasing it. And move on. And Or, or come and say, listen, woman of God, I, I came and visited your church or I saw you lying. I have, I'm going to buy you 100 brand new chairs. I'm going to buy you a PA system. I'm going to buy you a camera so that you can have in your church. I'm going to buy you an organ or um, drums or whatever because I see you don't have that. And just in case when the musicians come, you already have the stuff. So you won't be just singing on tracks. See, we don't do that as leaders. We don't do that as the priests of the Lord. We don't do what we do. We mock each other. We talk about what we have. We, we, we show off what we have and whatnot. And then those people that are struggling, they start looking up to those of us that have things. We look up, the people look up to us. And when they look up to us, they look and say, See, and they said it so soft and so solidly because some of them are embarrassed. And what happens is, because you want them to be your son or your daughter. No, no. Don't you go and take somebody else's son and daughter away from them and make them become a bastard. See, we got too many leaders operating with people and we're operating with bastard people in our churches. You done made that boy or that girl leave their church to be sit under you or leave their covering to sit under you. When people ask me, people invite me to preach. And people ask me, who are you under? I say, I'm under Word Harvest International Fellowship Churches of America. Now, the, the, organization, is, the organization is called Word Harvest International Fellowship of Churches. That is the name of the organization. But when I got there, I didn't know the name totally of the church. So pa Apostle had set me up to do the offering. I got up to do the offering. I said, come on, let's sow into Word Harvest International Fellowship of, of, um, of Churches of America. That's what I said. And um, he said, man, this man done renewed, renamed my organization. Watch this. So, so watch this. So um, uh, I tell them, and my pastor and my covering is Apostle Dr. James Lemuel Spence, Lady Dr. Suzette Spence, my my first presider is Bishop Lento Crenshaw and Overseer Crenshaw, Salon Crenshaw. So right there, it tells you, don't bother me. Don't come asking me, can I, can I be a part of you? Or would you like to be a part of me? I got a covering. And see what people does, is they feel like I'll help you if you're under me. What kind of demon is that? What kind of spirit of witchcraft is that? What kind of spirit of control and manipulation is that? If it's in your hand to do good, do good. I can't get nobody to help me tonight. What, what, what happened to all of my loves and my and my thumbs up? And what happened to all my smiley faces that I had earlier today? Glory to God. If it's in your hand to do good, why don't you just go ahead and do good? And don't worry about if they're going to sit under you. Don't worry about if they allow you to pass them or cover them or whatnot. You may not be their father. You may not have the heart that they need. To help them. So the church is in such a shamble. Just as the world is in a shamble. Our political officers don't know what the ham and cheese they're doing or what the HE2 hockey sticks to do. Same way with the church. The church don't know what the ham and cheese they're doing. Some of them. 
Are you hearing me? Don't know what they're doing. And what they're doing is getting up here mockering God, using God's platform for self-gratification and self-glory. And God said, okay, I'm going to do something about this. Everybody going to sit down. The political world going to have a shutdown and the church going to have a shutdown. So this ain't just for the church. This is for the world and the church. Now, if I be a prophet of God, and I know that I am, you ain't got to tell me. I know that you're going to feel the cause and the effect. Are you hearing me? Of what's going on? You, you, you have the ability. You have the ability, the gifts, the talents to professionalize another person's ministry. You can be a person uh, to stand up and, and love somebody and mentor them and not cover them. You don't have to cover them or follow them to mentor them. That's why it's called a mentor. All right. Listen, um, Pastor Murray put his son in karate school, him and Lady Andrea. Right. She is the instructor. The karate mentor, huh? She's not their parent. What that woman gonna look like trying to tell MJ how to live and how to control? MJ was going to the basketball place, of course, that he had him going. Pastor Murray and Lady Andrew was taken to him. And he was learning how to, you know, how to bounce the ball and to dribble and all of that, right? Glory to God. That man was just a coach. He wasn't MJ's father. He wasn't MJ's mother. Are you hearing me? Apostle James Lenuel Spence is my spiritual covering and father. I don't need Bishop Dukey and Stanky Breath to get him to my, you know, I would help you if you get under me. Well, demon, keep your money. I don't really need your help no doggone way. Why? Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, we run there too and we're safe. Because when it was in your hands to do good and you failed to help Israel, when Israel start conquering the land, we're going to conquer you too. Are you hearing me? I want to encourage your pastors, the churches, glory to God. I want to encourage you, men and women of God. I want to empower you. I know it seems as if, man, is God's there with us? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God is there. God is there. God's going to keep you. He's going to protect you. He's going to keep you safe and he's going to keep you. Uh, he, the Bible says in Proverbs, he guards the path of the righteous. He guards the path of the righteous, blesses the man that walketh not in the counsels of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but do do what? Delight in the law of the God, Lord. Do he meditate both day and night? He shall be like a what? Tree planted by the rivers of water and shall bring forth his fruits in its season. And every pastor, every leader, those of you that's in, the, in a struggling moment and you said we was in a struggle before we got to this. It's okay. Remember what I said Sunday. It's okay. It's okay, because guess what? You might be in a struggle, but God is getting ready to cause you to be favored. God is getting ready to cause you not, not just to be favored, but to walk in a favored place. Are you hearing me? Watch this. I, I, I'm going to show you something. Amos. Amos. Amos 9 and 11. It says, in that day will I restore the fallen house of David and I will repair the damaged walls from the ruins and I will rebuild it and restore it to its former glory listen I want you to be encouraged I want you to be encouraged young pastors young preachers those of you who are going through be encouraged don't faint don't fold don't 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 become a lunatic in the kingdom don't you become a bastard in the kingdom don't you let don't you let uh, all of this go on and let somebody come and tell you uh um well i can help you i can do this i can do that no no ma'am no sir don't you allow them stay on the wall be of good courage and the lord will strengthen thine heart lean not to thine own understanding but in all of thy ways acknowledge him and he shall do what direct your path are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? God is getting ready to do it for you. He said, I'm going to restore your place. Every church, a place of worship. We're not going to be discombobulated. We're not going to be disorientated. Why? Because God is going to restore us and he's going to strengthen us and he's going to continue to do what he said. In Jeremiah 29 and 11, if I spoke it, if I said it, I will make it good. I know my thoughts towards you, huh? Come on. I know my thoughts toward that I think towards you. It's good, not evil, but it has a what? An expected end. Come on, somebody. I need you to know that tonight that the Father have an expected end for you. I want you to know even in the midst of all of this, God has an expected end. He have a desired part for you. He have a, a desired destination for you. You're going to get there on time. Are you hearing me? I don't care how long it takes the world to recover. Saints, we will recover because we've been recovering for over seven dispensations. 
seven dispensations we've been recovering. Every time Israel messed up, every time Israel fell short, the Bible said they came back to God and God answered them. The Bible declares that Israel was, Israel was without a God for a long time and a teaching priest. But when they came back to God, God, he renewed them. He restored them. Why? Because they met the requirements. Call upon me. Call upon me. In the time of trouble, I'll answer you. Come on. God bless you. Every one of you that just sent me a cash app. All y'all that has been sending these cash apps while I've been teaching. Even on today, some of y'all sending cash apps today. God bless you. God bless you. And I pray that the heavens smile upon your finances and every seed that you've sown, that the Lord would give your seeds back to you are unmeasurable. No, I don't want God to give it to you a 30. I don't want God to give it back to you 60 or 100 fold. I want God to give you a kingdom measurement back. Everyone, I didn't ask you to do this. I'm not requiring you to do this. I am a priest of the Lord. I am the man of God. If you give, you give. If you don't, you don't. But I want to say this to you. Every one of you that's been doing it and been and been sending, I'm, I'm watching. I see the emails. I see the popping up that you're sending money and you're sending in. You're sowing into what I've been saying. You sowed in earlier today. Some of you have been sowing, sowing. Some of you have hit me up on Zello and said, accept this man of God. I want to give this to you. I didn't ask you for that. I'm only here to do what the good the Lord told me to do. I'm only here to encourage the saints of God that live Listen, but those you that have sold in, I want to speak an unmeasurable amount of money, an unmeasurable amount of favor. Your bills will be paid on time. I decree and declare that the hand of the Lord will be upon you and there'll be none lost, nothing lost in your house, nothing broken, nothing lacking and nothing missing. Now, let me say this to you, saints of God. God knows. He knows where you are. So he said, I'm going to rebuild the falling house. I'm going to rebuild the falling house of David and I'm going to repair the damaged walls. So anything that's going to be damaged in this, in this cycle right here that we're in, know that God will be repairing it. Sometimes God has to allow things to become damaged so he can fix some stuff. Because when he told us to fix it, we didn't have enough common sense to fix it because we're too busy trying to build. Are you hearing me? Number 12 says, and Israel, should, and Israel will possess what is left of Edom. And all the nations I have called to be mine. The Lord has spoken and he will do these things. Number, watch this. Number 13 says, the time will come, says the Lord, when the grain and the grapes will grow faster than they can be harvested. The terraced, yard, the terraced uh, vineyards on the hills of Israel will drip with sweet wine, and I will bring my exiled people of Israel back to their destined land, and they will rebuild their ruined city and live in them again. They will plant vineyards and gardens, and they will eat their crops and drink their own wine. And number 15 says, I will firmly plant them there in their own land, and they will never again be uprooted from the land I have given them, says the Lord. In this Holy Week, I want to prepare you to prepare yourself for kingdom takeover. God is about to grant you the permission to have a kingdom takeover. Hear me, pastors. Come on, I got some pastors on the line. Give me some hearts. Give me some heart. If you're a pastor and you're on the line, give me some heart. If you're a man or woman of God on the line, give me some hearts. Oh, you hear me? Give me some heart. Flood it up with hearts. Flood it up with hearts. Why? It's because God is getting ready to cause you to be anointed. He's deputizing you. He's deputizing you so for the kingdom takeover. He's deputizing you for the kingdom take over. Father is given to give you a, 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 a renew. He's going to cause you to take over like you have never taken over. N never mind what folks are doing. Let people feel the way they want to feel about you. You know what? This There's some people that don't like Pastor Juan. Let me tell you something. Some people don't like me because of what I stand for. I don't stand. I don't believe in same-sex marriage. So some folks don't like me. I don't believe in that you should be nine months pregnant or you should be pregnant and you're leading praise and worship. You don't like me. Some people don't like me because you can't be you can't be a, um, a single you can't be a musician and sleeping with all the members in the church. Some people don't like me because you can't be in the music department and you think that you can sleep with all the praise and worship leaders in the church and you ain't let them people alone. You know this? No, 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 I ain't let nothing alone. I'm not letting nothing alone because if you let it alone, that thing will grow and gonna be a stage for cancer and we all 
all going to die. My job as the priest and the leader of the church is to find the stuff that's messed up where the flat tie fix it. Because if you don't, we're going to mess up the, the church axle. We're going to mess up everything that's concerning the church. Get rid of, get that stuff, get it up, get it up out of here. You cannot, you cannot be laying up here with all these different people doing all this stuff on purpose, having all these abortions. And then call yourself saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. You can't do all that now. Come on now. I, I can understand before you got saved and, and whatnot and, and, and you live in certain kind of ways. No, because the Bible said if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. You can't tell me you are saved and you've been saved for three years now and you're still doing something that you've been doing for the last 30 years. Something is wrong. Something is wrong even with the conviction of the teacher. And that's why the Bible says, the Bible says that Israel have been without a God, a guidance. And they have been without a teaching priest. You got to teach these folks something. How are you going to be my son and you sleeping with everybody in the church and I'm the pastor? Come on. Come on, devil. We're going to come up out of We're going to bind the devil right now in the name of Jesus. How I'm going to be the presider or the chief apostle and I know. That you are the prophet of God or the pastor or the Jewish district leader, but you're sleeping with all the little boys in the church. No, no, you can get mad with me all you want. I'm going to declare the word of the Lord because it don't make no sense that the saints of God still living like the world and we want to call us and we're on our way to heaven. What heaven are you going to? I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I don't care what none of y'all say. I'm going to say what the word of God said. We got to live holy. We got to live right. We got to do what God's calling us to do. Let me say this to you. And I'm going to close. I'm going to get ready to close out on this. I got nine minutes to talk about this. We, we oftentimes say it's so complicated to serve God. It's just so complicated to serve God. I want to serve God, but it's so complicated. It's so complicated to serve God. I, I just, I really love the Lord. You know, I really love the Lord. I really love the Lord, but it's so complicated to, to be in church. It's so complicated to go to church. You know, I see too much. Seriously, you see too much. But you go on that job every day and you see more on that job. And that you ain't left that job. You, wait, wait, wait. you see a whole bunch of stuff with your mom and daddy. You want to talk about the pastor's a liar, but your mom is a liar. Your daddy's a liar. Come on. Your, your mama lied to who you who you belong to. Your daddy lied and said you didn't belong to him. Your daddy lied and said he, he didn't do a whole bunch of stuff. Are you, but you're still stuck on them. See, don't, 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 don't become double tongued and double minded. Serving God is not complicated. Serving God become complicated when you listen. Complication is on complication only exists when a person don't want to do the task. If you don't want to do the task, it's going to become complicated because you don't want to do it. If you don't want to be, uh, watch this. It's complicated for me to play basketball because number one, I don't understand what they're saying. You know why? Because it ain't something I want to do. America. It's complicated when they say first down, wait, first quarter, two down, third line. I'm like, what? 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 What is this? Huh? So I have to ask my son or my nephew, when they say, why that number say one down, one quarter, this, that? They say, oh, that's the first quarter is three down or whatever. I'm like, but it still don't make no sense to me. You know why it's complicated? Because I'm not interested of learning it. I'm not interested. I don't like it. So it, it's complicated. But if you say, okay, we're going on a cruise. You know, my son took me on my first cruise. You know, people say, well, if you're going to go on your first cruise, you only go for three days only so you can get a Houston. My first cruise that my son took me to was five days. And man, I bet you want to get out now. I want to go on a cruise all the time. Why? Because it's something I want to do. I didn't like it at first because I was afraid because there was too much water for me to drink and to urinate at the same time. So I said, well, you know, I can't swim that good. You know, I was playing in the water. I like to play in the water, but I can't swim that good. And that's deep and they got sharks and whales. So, you know, I don't want to go on that. No, that's too much of water. I can't drink that and urinate at the same time. I just can't do that. No, I won't be able to do that. So my son said, Pops, come on. You won't even know. I finally get on the boat and don't even realize that we're on the water. That was the best sleep that I ever had. So now I'm interested of going. Guess what? Even when I went, it wasn't even complicated because it was so beautiful. It was so me when I got on the boat. So it wasn't even complicated when I got on the cruise. I, listen, 
My son and my daughter, law was doing their thing. Me and Elder Jackie was in our room doing it. Well, let me not say it like that. Me and Elder Jackie was sharing our room. And she would go to her room early. Who? I stayed up and shut everything down. Why? It's because it was so fun on the boat. I got in the water. I put on my flip-flops. I put on my suit. I got. I was out there bare-chesting. I was out there just with my swim trunks on. Why? Because it was something to do. Now. It's a little different when Sister Phyllis went on the cruise last year. Last, last year when Sister Phyllis went, no, year before last, when Sister Phyllis went on the cruise, it was a little complicated. Why? It's because of her health issue, her walking and going around. But she enjoyed herself. She had fun. She went to all the things that she could go to. Watch this. I will promise you, because I don't know certain things or it's not interesting to me, it becomes complicated. Church is isn't complicated. It's only complicated when you don't want to be accountable or you lose interest. And you know why you lose interest? Because you don't want to be accountable. Most time when we lose interest in the thing is because it's too much requirement that that thing that we now have interest in is requiring. See, I will never be able to play basketball because I got to run too much back and forth on the courts. Then I got to throw the ball. And I don't like stanky people. And a lot of people don't take baths. don't brush their teeth. And a lot of people like to talk trash. So you jumping up and, and you following me and you hitting me with your mustard arm and you, you all over me. I don't like all that. So there is no interest for me in that. So playing basketball ain't something I would like to be able to do. Number one, I don't like people on top of me. So football was going to be out of the ordinary. I, I mean, out of the, the question. Because then people be tackling you and all these folks on top of you. I don't want that. So that's no interest for me. I can't meet the requirement. I lose the interest. So it's a complicated thing for me. Watch this. I don't even like running tracks. I used to run tracks in school. I don't like running tracks. Number one, that's too many runs we got to run around the lab. Too many laps we got to do. There's too much of stuff we got to do. Now, if you say, do you want to go to the mall? See, that's not complicated for me. Because you know why? That's something I like to do. That's something I interest. Do you want to go to church? It ain't a problem with me. I go to church anytime I want to go to church. I go to church seven days a week. I don't care. Because that's why it's something I want to do. I'll go to the barbershop if I can once a week or twice a week. When I lived in California, I went before Tuesday, Tuesday before Bible class, fresh cut. Saturday afternoon, I went and get fresh cut. You know how many times I wash my car? Two times a week. Right Saturday before Sunday and Tuesday before Bible class. Why? Those are the things I like to do. I have interest in them. Travel. Why do you like to travel? Why do you like to drive? Why? Because I like my friends to go with me. And maybe we don't have enough money to buy a plane ticket. So I'd rather let's, let's all pile up in the car and let's be not be defeated because we all don't have the big bang bucks. So what we're going to do is let's all pile up in our nice car, clean it all up, and let's take a ride. So we're going to put gas in. We got four drivers. We can put gas in. We can get to the hotel, get us a nice hotel, and enjoy ourselves. And we have defeated the enemy by still going. And no one knows that we wouldn't in, uh, we didn't fly there unless we tell it. See, those things are interesting to me. And it's not hard for me to get in a car and drive. I drove the to California from Atlanta. I drove from Atlanta, from LA to Atlanta. It, it's, it's not hard for me, because you know why? It's something I like to do. Church isn't hard. It only comes complicated when you lose interest. Why? Because you're putting your eyes on people and not your eyes on God. You came to church for the wrong motive. You came to church for the wrong motive. You came with the wrong agenda. And what happened is now the priests begin to fail to you. Or the priest seem like it's inadequate to you. There's no revelation anymore. You have lost the ability to hear or to learn from them. Because you put them on a pedestal. And then you gave them a great level of judgment that you can't, you can't maintain for yourself. How you don't want the preacher to fail when you fall in every Sunday? How you don't want the preacher to fall when, when, you, when you got a, a baby daddy at home or a baby mom at home. But then you're cheating with somebody else out there. Then you get mad when the preacher's talking and you think somebody done told the preacher something. Yes, yeah, somebody told the preacher something the Holy Ghost. God did. And then some preachers don't need the Holy Ghost and they don't need God to tell them. Because some of us preachers done live these lives. So we know what people gonna do. Some of us out here living. Then some of us are like me. We are out every day. We see the members. We see people. I had one member, uh, you know, somebody at my church, and I bust that ind individual several times. I said, you're not about to go tell on you, right? I'm about to go tell. Then you want to get mad. Why you want to get mad? You did it. You did the dirt. And now you want this person to suffer. No, this person's not about to suffer for you. You're the devil. And this person's the saints. So devil, we're going to get you checked. 
See, so I'm trying to help y'all today. The job of the priest, the job of us, we have a very important job. Every one of us have a very important job. You, every one of us have a very important job. I don't care if you're the pastor or the bishop or you're just a parking lot attendant. You have a job and that job is to stand between the porch and the altar because watch this. Every one of us in this room are a priest of the Lord. Every one of us in this room, we are the priests of the Lord. We are God's servant. Are you hearing me? We are God's servant. I want to empower you and encourage you today, dearly beloved. Listen, my time is up. I love each and every one of you. I want you to know that as a priest, you have an assignment. You have a job. You have a, a requirement to do. You've got to meet the requirement so that God can respond to you. And the respond, God not just responding to you. He responding to his word that's on the inside of you. John 15 and 7 said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask me what you will and it shall be done unto you. God respond to his word. While you are responding to that word that's on the inside of you, God is responding to that word that you have. Are you hearing me? Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, this will last as long as you disobey and fail to be obedient. Obey the law of the land. Every pastor, every pastor, obey the law of the land before you get locked up and be in jail. Obey the law of the land. Stop allowing greed to me. Let me say this. I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with this right here. I promise you, I'm going to close with this right here. Some of us pastors, and it's not, 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 I, I don't know if Sister Bonita, Pastor Bonita is still on here. All you bishops are still on here and preachers. Let me say this. I'm going to say this, and, and, and y'all may not like me. Uh, my sister Tanya Thompson is on. I, 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 I'm going to say this, and y'all not going to like me, but I'm going to say it anyway. Some of these people that got these churches open, you're not having these churches open because the Lord told you to do that. Some of you have got these churches open because greed is speaking to you. If you get rid of that greed, greedy spirit and let these folks get their self in the face of God, you will watch the growth of your church. Now, I said it and I'm not backtracking and backpedaling you. Some of y'all, some of these people, they got all these folks locked up in these churches and know that all this stuff is going on. And letting this stuff spread this stuff back to homes and whatnot. You got greed. Now, if you are the pastor, the bishop, the apostle, the prophet, whatever you are, and you're in your church just with your leaders, and you're you're going live just with your leaders, and you're going live, I'm not talking to you. But I'm talking about those of y'all that's having these three o'clock service. I mean, no, let me not say no three o'clock service, because maybe your church service started three o'clock. But those of y'all that are having these special Women's Day program, Men Day program, Usher Day program, Founders Day program. You got all these programs going on in the midst of the government shutting us down. And you got these Men Days, Women Days programs going on, fundraisers going on. That's a spirit of greed. If you don't shut that church down, God going to do something real good to you. You hear what I said? I didn't say God going to do nothing bad to you. So don't take that and cut, chop. No, I said the Lord going to do something real good to you. Real good to you. You know what he's going to do real good to you? He's going to set you down. He's going to set your behind down some way and give you some act right pill. You need it. That's too many programs going on. If another person invite me and tell me we're having our program, I know the government. And then y'all going live with this stuff. I can understand if you're the pastor and you're at your church and you may have a musician there and you're very distant and then you have somebody get them doing praise and worship and they have their own mic and then you come in with your mic and you're sharing the word to all of your people. I get it. But if you're demanding your people to come to the church and they're sitting up in there shoulder to shoulders, stop that. That's a spirit of greed. God ain't pleased with that. That's foolishness. That is, that's foolish. Get you some act right and sit down somewhere. 
Now, I'm, I'm closing. I'm leaving it alone because I'm three minutes over my time. I love each and every one of you. Listen, we're going to be in prayer at 530 in the morning, and then we're fasting on this week. Uh, in the morning, Bishop Terrence Bailey is going to be giving us the words of wisdom, and he's going to be praying and carrying us through on tomorrow. Amen. Listen, leaders, it's time for us to pray. It's time for us to seek God. It's time for us to cry out to God. Amen. And listen, do it and do it right. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this again in my closing. So some I don't be crazy and try to do crazy stuff or say something that make me have to go there on you. Let me help you with something because, you know, I am the preacher that will go there on you. Let me help you with something. I didn't say that you can't have church service. I didn't say that. So don't let the devil fool you and play with you. All right. I didn't say that. I'm saying about all these comp all these these programs that's going on. And you're trying to have a program in the midst of the government saying you can't do that because of all of this that's going on. All those people that went to Spring Break came back infected and impo ex ex uh, uh, been, been infected with this mess called coronavirus, right? Why would you bring your members in your church, all these members in these churches, and you're allowing these people to pile up in your churches, and you don't know what these people got going on in them? Because I said it earlier today, and I'm going to say it again. See, people won't tell you what the issues is because they want your resources. They want your resources, so they won't tell you what the issues is. You don't know how many people are infected with something and will never tell you and will lay up with you. Wake up, America. Wake up, church. Them people done told us what to do. God is telling us what to do. Get in our sealed houses. Cry, weep, and pray, and seek him until he pass by. Amen? Listen, don't let the spirit of greed get you and your people caught up in a place that they're going to really need God. Now, you ain't got to listen to me. You can say whatever you want to say. You can say, I don't like the Lord. I don't care. You don't have to like me, but you got to love me. You don't have to like me. You got to love me to get to heaven. Are you hear me? But long as God is pleased with me and God loved me, that's all I was concerned. Get yourselves together. Stop playing around. We ain't got time to play. People out here dying. And let me say this. 70% 70, 70 of the people that are dying are African Americans. Because you know why? We don't have enough insurance. We don't, our community don't have enough money. So we already have underlining issues in our lives. 70% of the people that is dying are African Americans or Latinos or Mexicans. Come on. Let's get this thing together. Get in your sealed houses and cry out to the Lord. Cry out to the Lord. Thank you, uh, Pastor Tanya. You know, I love you and like you too. Amen. I want to say all of you, I love you and I like you because I'm trying to get to heaven. If you miss me on there, catch me in there because I'm living rapture ready. I'm on my way to heaven and I ain't turning around. I'm going to say nothing but the truth. So help me, God. God bless you. Pray for me as I pray for you. All right. Till the next time. Bye bye.